with him. He's so funny. Put your hands together for Mama Do and Daye. Yo, what's good? How y'all doing? Cool, cool, cool. Y'all look beautiful tonight. I can't see you, so just take my word for it. Uh, nah, uh, so I recently just got back from London. Anyone been? London's great, right? I had to take a break from the United States, all like the racism, you know, homophobia, transphobia, misogyny, hypocrisy, to go to where it all started, so. <laughs> they did not like that joke there at all. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> Though. It's nice because you got a little bit different perspective on what's going on in the world. Uh, over there, uh, I was hanging out with one of my friends and he was telling me about things going on, the problems that they have in London. He's from South London, he's like, yo, there's been a lot of stabbings going on here. There's a lot of stabbings, hundred stabbings this year. And I was like, hold on, you say stabbings? How, how do I sign up for that? Because what we got going on in the United States is crazy. I will, I, that sounds like a relationship. How do I get someone to look me in the eyes and murder me? That sounds wonderful. <laughs> People out there just hit it and quit it. I don't like that. I want a relationship. How, how can I have that happen for me? And I left, came back here with new knowledge, came back to two of my favorite seasons, uh, cuffing season. Anyone engaging in cuffing season? You know what that means? Should I get a relationship? Cool, cool, cool. And also NBA season. Any basketball heads in here? Anyone like basketball? Bet. Cool, cool, cool. I'm still going to do these basketball jokes. <laughs> Sorry, it's looking doom. Mostly because, like, it, you don't need to know a lot about basketball for him. Like, basically, like, you know, during cuffing season, you do this thing called shooting your shot. You know what that is? Shooting your shot. You see someone, oh, that person's cute. I'm gonna shoot my shot. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But as a basketball fan, that oversimplifies the game of basketball. Does that make sense? Even if you don't watch basketball, you know that you don't just shoot your shot. You're not Carmelo Anthony. You gotta actually go play the game. You know, you have things to do. You can't just shoot your shot. Like, you can't, you never hear someone being like, yo, all right, you see that girl there? She's really cute. I'm gonna inbound you the ball, set a pick. You get around that person, you're a step, you're gonna roll that into the rim. That, that, that doesn't work. It's too complicated. We're Americans. That sounds like cardio. We're not doing that. <laughs> That's wild. I don't like shooting a shot. It, it really makes me feel weird because it oversimplifies dating. And also, like, a lot of people are not good at shooting the shot in the first place. You know, like, a lot of men take low percentage shots. They're like sending news. That's a full court shot. That's just not going in. <laughs> not going to make it in. You know, texting, hey, big head, after midnight. That's a, that's a half court shot. That might go in, but not often. <laughs> Men also aren't good at fundamentals. I think it's just shooting a shot. No, you gotta like do other things. You gotta learn how to pass, you gotta dribble, go to therapy, you gotta like lots of things you gotta do before you get to shooting your shot. And then when you do shoot your shot, like you can't just shoot your shot, it goes in and then you're done. No, you got four quarters of basketball to play, my nigga. You gotta, yes, you can do. You gotta get back on defense, you gotta play. And say you do get through all of that, that's great. Guess what, you won your first game, but now you're in the Eastern Conference Finals. You got all these other teams ahead of you, you gotta meet her friends. You gotta meet her family. You gotta play the Boston Celtics. Kyrie looking good right now, all right? So like, you got a lot to go against. And say you do go through the whole regular season, you build this relationship with someone, it's wonderful, but then guess what? You got the Western Conference, and her ex is over there. We're gonna call him LeBron James. And you, you tell yourself anything, right? You're like, yo, you know what? Like, he ain't even that tall. No, that nigga tall. He's <laughs> You're under six foot. You're useless in society, so. <laughs> That nigga tall, all right? You're like, I got a better hairline than him. He's LeBron James, he has his own shoe, and you can fit in his shoe with your short ass. <laughs> Insane. That's why when people say, hey mom, that girl's cute, shoot your shot, I pass the ball right back, and I'm like, yo, I tore my ACL last season. I can't. <laughs> Not ready for all this. <laughs> I'm at that age, my mom started to ask me about like, you know, being in a relationship with people, you know, having kids and stuff like that. And I'm like, mom, have you seen the everything? Like, I'm not having kids, it's irresponsible to bring a kid into this world right now. Not only that, not only that, thank you, Sack Lab. <laughs> yes, it's terrible outside. <laughs> It's not only that, but I also used to be a seventh grade science teacher in Best Eye, which was like a wonderful experience, but like it was also enough with kids that I don't want to have them myself, you know? 
It's weird, because being a teacher is crazy because you go in every day at 7 a.m. just to get gaslit for 10 hours by children. <laughs> and it's terrible, because a kid will throw a pencil. You'll be like, hey man, I saw you throw that pencil. He goes, I didn't throw a pencil. And then you're like, damn, how do I tell this little nigga he threw a pencil? <laughs> I saw that shit, I saw that shit. You slowly go crazy. You slowly go insane. And it sucks, because seventh grade is a terrible time, right? Who had a terrible seventh grade year? Make some noise. Yeah, seventh grade is horrible. It's terrible. I remember when I was in seventh grade, I had a higher voice than the kids that I was around. But then, you know, years later, I got to teach seventh graders, which was worse because now I had a higher voice than the kids I was teaching. And that's not a good situation to be in. You have no, no respect from these kids. I can't point to a kid and be like, yo, Johnny L, come here. Yeah? <laughs> Nah, you're right, stay over there, stay there. I'm, I'm gonna come to you, I'm gonna move this desk. Yo, pick up that pencil, y'all, I'll come to you. You want some coffee? I got coffee on my desk. I can mean, I mean, have one little sip, you can have it. You want it? Weird situation to be in. Haven't been teaching for a few years, but I do miss my kids. I think about them every single day, especially in this current climate, with you know, school shootings and stuff like that. And it's wild because this administration is basically just trying to like add more guns to the situation. They want to give guns to teachers, and that's, I mean, we're so pressured, so, so hard to be in the classroom with all these kids to have a gun, it's a lot of responsibility. Cause then if a kid goes, I'm like, yo, John Yale, turn to page 43. And he's like, nah. I'm like, all right, nigga, you gonna turn to page 43. You know what I'm talking about, all right? And then what happens is like, no, nigga, you turn to page 43. And all my niggas get fruit by the foot. Like that's, I gotta use 80% of my teacher salary on fruit by the foot. That's, I'm taking that out. I don't know if y'all have been reading the news recently, but last week there was a video going around about people teaching dogs how to intervene in school shooting situations. First off, this Airbud reboot looks terrible. I, I'm gonna watch it, but it, it looks terrible. Second off, second off, we're like seven months away from a headline it's like when a good boy with a gun turns into a bad boy with a gun. Like we, I don't want to have to read that sort of shit. I want to agree on two things as an audience. Can we do this? Two things. One, dogs shouldn't have guns. <laughs> and two, white women shouldn't have cell phones. Uh, <laughs> thank you for the sack clap again. No, 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 it's cool. As long as you're not racist, white women, you're allowed to have a cell phone. I was on a plane recently, and uh, I was going to the bathroom, and a lady came out of the bathroom, fucking sling in her hands. It was a vape. She was vaping on the plane, which is a $5,000 fine but I didn't report her. I didn't snitch, I'm not a snitch. I didn't report her to the police, nothing, so I didn't want to appropriate white woman culture. So, that shit right. Don't say I don't do things for y'all. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Don't say I don't do things for y'all. No. I've been black for a while now. No. Uh, you know, being black so long, you start realizing different things. Number one, racists are one-track minded. They think about one thing and one thing only. For instance, I'm black. But not only that, I'm also Muslim from a family of immigrants. So as you can tell, things are not going well right now. <laughs> but racists, they don't see the black part of me. They don't want to like, you know, go any deeper, you know? <laughs> they don't want to hate all of me, you know? Like, <laughs> they'll be like, hey nigger, I'm like, well wait, there's more! <laughs> what? Well, someone to hate me. <laughs> Second, Racism's tied into so many different things in American society that it's very hard you know, to dissociate from it. Tied to politics, social systems, sports, sex, like it's tied in all these different things. Recently one of my black friends had sex with a white woman. She started saying yo and dope after that. He sexually transmitted Ebonics to her. <laughs> and I first started writing a think piece that people would retweet without reading. So I started writing it without, you know what? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wouldn't it be dope if they work the other way around, like if I had sex with a white woman and could finally say hello, officer. <laughs> that got a little too real. <laughs> don't worry, I have to deal with it, you don't. But still, third thing I learned about racists is that they will pull random things out of anywhere and then put that into your mouth. So I was in a fight with someone on the internet, as you do, and we are talking about HBO's Confederate. I don't know if you've seen the show. It's a show about if the Confederacy had won the Civil War that they were trying to make, basically, America after 2016. So we're having this argument, and then back and forth, all, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she goes, yo, I bet you wish white people were slaves, and 
I did not say that. I was like, yo, lady, I did not say that. That's wild. Why would you put those words in my mouth? Because now I've got to come down to Littlefield and make fun of you in front of random people. <laughs> so imagine if all white people were slaves. Just for a moment, just for a moment, all right? It's, it's not going to happen. I can't promise that. But it's not going to happen soon. So you have a little bit of time. Get to Canada. So imagine white people were slaves. Just imagine a bunch of able-bodied white people, you know, out on plantation, you know, sun beating down on their back, someone putting SPF 55 on their back. <laughs> Tagger broken stops on their feet. <laughs> Singing Caucasian spirituals. <laughs> if you like pina coladas, <laughs> get caught. In... <laughs> right? She would be crazy. <laughs> no one told me slavery would be this way. Like, <laughs> she would be crazy. I know, I know you're not loving this, but I would watch every season of White Roots. I watch all of it. <laughs> Oh my God, see if Slave Ross and Slave Rachel get together, that's crazy, I would love that shit. It'll be great. <laughs> Better get all the fucking Emmys. <laughs> oh man, leave you guys with this. Uh, not only do I do comedy, I also DJ. And as a DJ, you know, uh, people request songs. And uh, one time this person of no color, um, <laughs> She came up to me and said, excuse me, do you have a song, Niggas in Paris by Kanye West and Jay-Z? You clearly know where the problem is in this situation. <laughs> and I was like, the fuck you just said? Cause you know, I'm, so, I'm trying to clarify things before I pop off. And she goes, oh, you probably tripped because I said nigga. I'm like, yeah, you just said that shit twice. The fuck is wrong with you? Uh, and she said these things in this order. Hey man, I'm a nigga, you're a nigga, he's a nigga, she's a nigga. We all niggas, man. Then she backed away from me, arms outstretched like this. Just disappeared in the dancing bodies behind her. If anyone's seen Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, it was just like when Sirius went up into the bear, just disappeared. I was gonna imagine she said nigga so many times. I'm mad that I'm 27 years old. I never heard uh, the word nigga conjugated before. Like I nigga, you nigga, you shit, nigga. I didn't know it was a possibility. Y'all been fucking fantastic. Give it up for y'all.